All right, welcome back, students. We're going to talk today about the Fury of Achilleus in the Gods books 20 to 22. We're going to try and get to 22. We probably won't. Um, that said, remember, last time we were speaking, we spoke about Achilleus' shield. We understood that Achilleus' shield is a piece of ekphrasis, was a representation of everything that exists within human experience. Uh, city at war, city at peace, murder within city at peace, also a marriage. We saw some reaping, some sowing, some gods at war. We saw the oceans, we saw the stars, we saw all that is categorically speaking. We then saw a resolution between which two characters, which two characters finally are no longer standing in division of conflict, though one claims that it was never his fault, it was just delusion's fault, which got thrown down because Her Heracles once got messed with by this goddess and Zeus has nothing to do with her anymore. Yes? Agamemnon and Achilleus, yes. And remember that Achilleus blames anger, Agamemnon blames delusion. Both of them sort of claim that they were out of their minds. And in fact, Achilleus says something that we didn't really care about so much, saying that he wishes that Briseis would have died uh, rather than uh, Patroclus. So he wishes the girl would have died in the first place so that he never became angry, so that his friend didn't end up dying. Which means, even though he does seem to care for Briseis, that he really cared about Patroclus, he's still very upset. And the question that we're going to keep in our minds is this. When Achilleus returns to the fighting, as he returns to the fighting, now, has his character grown? Has he learned anything from his first conflict with Agamemnon? Or has he just transferred his initial anger from one person to another person? And if he has just transferred his anger from Agamemnon to Hector, well... Has he gotten to the root of his anger? Has he expiated his own anger? And has he developed his personality or character? Has he become more mature? And a big question, I mean, and I, just for those of the recording, everybody's shaking their heads right now, and uh, nobody, none of us seem to believe that he has become more mature. We'll talk about that in the seminar uh, on Thursday. All right, let's talk about book 20. So boom, here it finally happens. Remember in book eight, Zeus did what with the gods? He talked about a golden chain, and he said, you guys can't do what anymore? Yes. Now, book 20. Let me grab it, and I'm opening it. And let's see what it is he says. In turn, so Zeus has assembled all the gods in this house, and he's talking directly to Poseidon. Poseidon then says, why lord of the shining bald? He seems to be still a little bit angry at his brother, or his brother saying that he would fight him earlier on uh, through the messenger of Iris. Why lord of the shining bolt? Have you called gods to the assembly once more? Are you deliberating Achaeans and Trojans? For the onset of battle is almost broken to flame between them. Flame between them. So book 20 starts with flames. It will end with flames as well, describing Achilles. In turn, Zeus, who gathers the clouds, spoke to him and answered, you have seen, shaker of the earth, the counsel within me. Apparently Poseidon can understand the mind of Zeus potentially even better than Hera. And why I gathered you. I think of these men, though they are dying. Even so, I shall stay here upon the folds of Olympus, sitting still, watching to pleasure my heart. Recall, Zeus always stays neutral because he maintains the balance, the order. He is the principle of order as a god. Meanwhile, all you others go down, wherever you may go among the Achaeans and Trojans, and give help to either side as your own ple pleasure directs you. Or if we leave Achilles, I love this line. Pay attention to this. Stop writing. Listen, listen, listen. Because this is what you have been wanting to hear. Who wants to hear direct textual evidence of how strong Achilles is? All of us? Line 26. For if we leave Achilles alone to fight with the Trojans, they will not even for a little hold off swift-footed Pelion. That means the son of Peleus. What has Zeus just directly told us? If he does not let the gods back down on the battlefield, what will happen extremely fast to the Trojans now that the now that Achilles is back on the Achaean side? Uh, Troy will fall. Troy will fall. Almost immediately. Almost immediately. For even before now, they would tremble whenever they saw him. And now when his heart is grieved and angered for his companions, said, I fear against destiny. He may storm their fortress. That is such a powerful thing for him to say. He says that Achilles might be so angry against the Trojans that if the gods do not return to the battlefield in order to help the Trojans, that Achilles might actually overcome which force which nobody ever, ever has overcome. Destiny. 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 How powerful is the rage of a man? Uh, 
apparently one of the most destructive things, if not the most destructive thing that exists, even as much as, or if not more than a hurricane. Hmm. So spoke the son of Kronos and woke the incessant battle, and the gods went down to enter the fighting with purposes opposed. Hera went to the assembled ships with Pallas Athena and with Poseidon, who embraces the earth, with generous Hermes, who within the heart is armed with astute thoughts. So Hermes is like, is, is very like Athena and very like Odysseus. He's very clever. He's very smart. Hephaestus went the way of these in the pride of his great strength, limping, and yet his shrunken legs moved lightly beneath him. But Ares of the shining helm went over to the Trojans, and with him Phoebus of the unshorn hair, and the lady of arrows, Artemis, and the smiling Aphrodite, Leto, who is the mother of Artemis, and... Um, and uh, Apollo, and Xanthos. Uh, Leto is called Latona in the, the Roman mythology. Uh, now in the time when the gods were still distant from the mortals, so long the Achaeans were winning great glory, since now Achilles showed among them who had stayed too long from the sorrowful fighting. But the Trojans were taken, every man in the knees with trembling and terror, as they looked on the swift-footed son of Peleus, shining in all his armor, a man like a murderous war god. But after the Olympians merged in the men's company, strong hatred, defender of peoples, burst out in Athena, bellowed, standing now beside the ditch, dug at the walls outside, and now again at the thundering sea's edge, gave out her great cry, while on the other side, Ares, in the lightness of a dark storm cloud, bellowed, now from the peak of the citadel, urging the Trojans sharply on, now running beside the sweet banks of the Sinaeus. So the blessed god, stirring on the opponents, drove them together and broke out amongst themselves, the weight of their quarrel. All right, here it is. Here it is. From high above, the father of gods and man, or men, made thunder terribly, while Poseidon from the deep under them shuddered all the illimitable earth. So there's thunder. There's an earthquake. There's fire imagery. The gods are coming down. Everybody's scared of Achilles. Is this a time of high, scary emotion? Is a big battle that will decide the fate of everything about to happen? Yes. 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 Almost. It seems like that's what's going to happen. And if the gods did not go down, this would be the battle in which Troy fell. But something perhaps, hmm, perhaps though Troy does not fall in this battle, that which will cause Troy to fall does happen. Perhaps the roots of Troy here are destroyed. Perhaps the heart of Troy will be destroyed here. And just skipping forward a little, and all the feet of Ida with her many waters were shaken, and all her crests, and the city of Troy, the ships of the Achaeans, Idonius, that's Hades, lord of the dead below, was in terror, and sprang from his throne and screamed aloud for fear that above him he who circles the land beside might break the earth open, and the houses of the dead lie open to men and immortals, ghastly and moldering, so the very gods shudder before them. Such was the crash. And just a few more lines here because I want to see, I want you to see how the gods match up against each other. It sounded as the gods came driving together in wrath. For now, over against the Lord Poseidon, Phoebus Apollo took his sand. Bang! With his feathered arrows. And against Inyalios, the, gro the goddess, gray eyed Athena. Inyalios here is, uh, is uh, a name for Ares. Against Hera, stood the lady of clamor of the golden distaff of the showering arrows artemis sister of the far striker it's going to be kind of funny how Hera deals with her and against hephaestus stood the great deep eddying river who is called xanthos by the gods but by mortals scamandros the gods went on to encounter gods and meanwhile achilles was straining to plunge into the combat opposite hector something very interesting you might want to wonder for seminar is why is it that the gods, or symbolically speaking, why is it that the gods re-enter the fighting the moment that Achilles re-enters the fighting? Is it the case that he stirs up such powerful emotions that it is as if there are gods fighting while he is fighting? Something interesting to wonder. So, okay, the gods are sent that back down to the battlefield to keep Achilles from ruthlessly killing all the Trojans. The gods descend, Hades fear the collapse of the earth to the underworld. All right, this is something very bizarre that then happens. Aeneas, one of the top Trojans, now the top in the top two Trojans, now that who is dead? Um, Sarpedon. Apollo goes up to Aeneas and convinces him to fight against Achilles. This is odd for multiple reasons, but in particular, which reason? Well, it would be odd 
for a Trojan god to convince a Trojan, like Aeneas, a Dardanian technically, to fight against Achilles, knowing what we know about Achilles. Yes? It's basically suicide. It's basically suicide. What is he trying to do, getting Aeneas to fight against Achilles? Obviously, Aeneas is not strong enough to fight against him. And here's something additional. There is a prophecy about Aeneas that after the Trojans fall, Aeneas will lead the Trojans. So what must Aeneas do during the course of this war? Survive. He must survive. And that means avoid Achilles. And in fact, when Apollo goes down to convince Aeneas, he takes the form of this guy named Lycaon, who will <laughs> soon see die. <laughs> uh, and he tries to convince Aeneas to fight. And what Aeneas says is, I did try to fight Achilles once. He actually caught me off the mountain of Ida, and I had to run away from him until I got into another city. And in that city, he then sacked that city. And I barely escaped. I know, I know. And if it wouldn't take me too long, I, I would read his response. I just, you know how it gets if I can't find it uh, immediately. It's always, uh, oh my gosh, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do my best. Okay, okay, here it is. Zeus's son, Apollo, made his voice like that of uh, like him. This is line 81. Priam's son and assumed his appearance and spoke to Aeneas. Aeneas, Lord of Councils, what are the threats, or where are those threats gone, which as you drank your wine, you made before Troy's king solemnly. I like that. He's like, when you're hanging out at home, you make lots of threats, but now that it's time for action, where's the action? And is that not how we talk to each other? Yes? So, Achilles chased him, and then once he was in the city, he just sacked it himself. Well, let's read. Let's read. This is uh, Aeneas' response in line 86. Like Haon, son of Priam, he's talking to Apollo, why do you urge me on against my will to fight in the face of Peleus' son and his too great fury? Since this will not be the first time I stand up against swift-footed Achilles, but another time before now he drove me with a spear from Ida when he came there after our cattle, the time he sacked Lernessos and Pedassos. But Zeus rescued me when he put strength inside me and made my knees quick. Otherwise I should have gone down at Achilles' hands and those of Athena who goes before him and makes light before him, who were then urging him on with a brazen spear to destroy Leleges and Trojans. Thereby it is not for any man to fight with Achilles. There is always someone of the gods with him to beat death from him. Without this, even his spear wings straight to its mark, nor gives out until it has gone through a man's body. But if the god only would pull out even the issue of war, he would not so easily win not even though he claims to be made all of bronze. So it's actually two cities that end up getting sacked, funnily enough. So, that said, it does happen to be the case that Apollo convinces Aeneas to fight against Achilles. Aeneas stands against him. It's a fairly long fight, actually, where Aeneas gets to throw a spear. doesn't go through even two folds of the five folds of Achilles' shield. Uh, uh, Achilles throws the spear all the way through uh, Aeneas' shield, and a very weird thing happens, apparently, as the, the, the spear hits the shield, Aeneas throws it away in fear, which I guess is something that can physically happen. And, well, Aeneas is about to die. When he is about to die against Achilles, which is what anybody would be about to do against Achilles fighting them, except for potentially Heracles, uh, well, who goes down to save him? We would expect a god from which side? The Trojan, the Trojan side, of course. And yet, it happens to be Poseidon who recalls the prophecy about Aeneas, suggesting that he will one day rule the, uh, the Trojans, and which we will see in the Aeneid. And so, uh, funnily, and I, I would read this to you if we had more time, uh, Poseidon then goes to Hera and Athena and says, ladies, will you help me go save Aeneas? And Hera says, no, flatly. She says, no, we hate the Trojans so much that even if this is the will of Zeus and destiny, we will not help it happen. And so Poseidon has to throw a mist about the eyes of Achilles, and then when Achilles comes to again, can see again. Yeah. Which emotion do you think he feels? Rage. More anger and rage. He is enraged. He gives a little soliloquy about that sort of thing. Good, 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 good. Oh, yes. And uh, <laughs> this is so funny. So just uh, to go back for a second, one of the things that Apollo says to, um, in the form of Lycaon to Aeneas to convince him to fight against Achilles is, and it makes a lot of sense, and we will see something like this said again later today or in our next lecture tomorrow, Paul says, why are you even afraid of Achilles? Aeneas, your mom is an Olympian goddess, Aphrodite. His mom is not an Olympian goddess. She's a Nereid. Her name is Thetis. Therefore, by this logic, 
who should be stronger because he comes from a stronger goddess? Aeneas, who is definitely not stronger regardless of where he came from. Aeneas, that's right. That's right. That does seem to convince him. It's very interesting. Can you be persuaded to do something because something sounds smart but is not true? Is that something we've seen happen before in the Iliad? Where is it that we saw somebody convinced by a god through persuasive speech but not true speech to do something that led to his own death? Pandaros. Excellent. When Athena went down and convinced his fool's heart. Yes, and in fact, Aeneas is also called a fool for standing against Achilles because, well, is he a god? Does he stand a chance? No, no. Good. All right. Aeneas faces Achilles. They threaten. He gives his family history. That's something interesting, too. He spends so much time telling Achilles what his family history is. A, when have we seen a character give a long family history before, and B, what does that undoubtedly tell us uh, the emotion which Aeneas is feeling right now? Yes? Uh, Glaucus talking to Diomedes. Glaucus talking to Diomedes. Good. Go ahead and answer the second part, too. Why is it that Aeneas gives his long family history to Achilles? He doesn't want to die. Because he doesn't want to die because he's scared, because he's talking as long as he possibly can. So, good. Poseidon is actually the one that ends up saving Aeneas, not Aeneas one. Good. All right, good. So, I already mentioned that Poseidon asks uh, Hera and Athena between lines 309 and 317. I'll, I'll read that to you very, very quickly. Since I have it listed, I might as well. I might as well. All right, so. In turn, the lady of the ox eyes, Hera, Hera answered him. So, uh, Poseidon has just said, Please help me save Aeneas, even though he is not on our side, because destiny requires that he be saved, and Cronos' son Zeus will be very angry at us if we uh, act against destiny. Shaker of the earth, you yourself must decide in your own heart about Aeneas, whether to rescue him or let him go down for all his strength before Peleus' son Achilles. For two, we two, Pallas Athena and I have taken numerous oaths and sworn them in the sight of all the immortals never to drive the day of evil away from the Trojans. Not even when all the city of Troy is burned in the ravening fire. On that day when the warlike sons of the Achaeans burn it. That is an excellent quote. I want you to remember that for the Aeneid. Not even when all the city of Troy is burned. She says, when will she be not angry at the Trojans? Not even after they're dead. Not even after they're dead will her anger disappear. And that is true. Because in the Aeneid, can you guess which goddess is going to be messing with the, the vestiges of the Trojan Empire the entire time? Yeah. Hera. She'll be called Juno at that time, which is where we get the, uh, the, the I was going to say the country, interesting. I guess time can be a place. The, uh, the calendar month, June from. June, just like July, Julius. Yes. Is there a reason why Hera hates the Trojans? Well, the idea that we're given, at least um, in this case, is because they, because Paris chose against her and Athena in the judgment of Paris and chose rather for Aphrodite. We could think symbolically about that during the seminar, though. What is it that the Trojans, if the gods represent principles, what is it that the Trojans chose that led them to fall that the Achaeans did not choose? Or what is it that the Achaeans chose? Did the Achaeans choose wisdom over love? Or political power over love? Or unity over love? Did Paris choose himself over his own people? Is it the fact that the Achaeans choose their principles over their individual desires that makes them a more powerful force than the Trojans? Something that we should, I think, talk about and keep in mind. All right, good. Apollo then, uh, okay, Poseidon convinces Aeneas to retreat, drifts the mists across the eyes of Achilles. Achilles is then enraged. When the mist clears, uh, line 340 to 350. Apollo then counsels Hector, do not stand against Achilles. So he's finally giving some good advice. He says, don't do it alone. And that will be important later, because Hector will try to stand against Achilles, as we know. He will try and do it, not alone. But again, which god or goddess is so good at making things, <laughs> is so good at tricking people who do not use their minds extremely well? Yes. Not Apollo. No. Athena, yes, goddess of wisdom, because, well, to be wise means you can tell the truth, but there's another truck word that she can do. Something very related to Halloween. Trick. Trick, 
Yes, because if you're wise, you can tell the truth to people. You can also lie better than other people, too, which we'll see uh, certainly with Odysseus, who, well, we're going to go through one of his lies. When he gets it to meet his swine herd in either Book of 13 or 14 of the Odyssey, and Eumaeus, and tells him who he is, he's going to give a three-page long lie. I just want you to think about how in-depth a line has a lie has to be to be about 90 lines long. It's like, most of our lives are like, I, I didn't take the cookie. Someone's like, okay, there are crumbs on your mouth. They're like, oh. Our lives are usually one sentence long and not very, and not very good. Odysseus's lies, there, he will give an entire history of who he is and who his people are and how he got to where he was, and everybody will believe him. Because he's that clever. All right, so Hector is not going to stand against Achilles. Okay, now I'm going to give you an example just because this is important to the epic tradition. A character, Polydorus. Polydorus, I said, is like Kenny, Kenny from uh, South Park. Kenny, we know from South Park, even if we don't watch that show, he's considered a vulgar or whatever. It, he's a character known for dying in different ways in every one of the first several seasons. And so Polydorus, we know about him probably because he does what? Throughout different epic stories. Dies in different ways, right. And so the first way he ever dies is in the Iliad against Achilles. We will also get an account of how he died in a very different way by, in the Aeneid, we'll get a different account in the Divine Comedy. I think we also get an account in Ovid's Metamorphoses, too. So, lines 207 to 418 or so, or at least so I say, Polydorus gets taken, uh, I think it's actually 407, if I look at it. So, yes, yes it is. So, Achilles is mad. What's he going to do? Take it out on somebody? Well, it's pretty cruel. Next, he went... This is 407. With the spear after God like Polydorus. And I want you to hear sort of how sad this is. Priam's son, whom his father would not let go into battle because he was the youngest born of all his sons to him. Polydorus is the which son of Priam? Youngest. youngest. And thus, if he gets killed, it is most what that he has died. When a very young person dies, we call it what? A tragedy. And so this will be a very tragic death whom his father would not let go into battle because he was the youngest born of all his sons to him. So he had to sneak out because he was too young to fight, but he was so noble of heart that he wanted to fight. Do we want him to die? Wait, but how old was he like our age? When he was he like your age? Certainly. Certainly he was like your age. Possibly even a little bit younger. Possibly even a little bit younger. You all are freshmen. And, well, you know, there are stories that Helen was first married to Theseus or abducted when she was 12. And so you might imagine that people of high school age would certainly be fighting. I mean, you didn't have high school at that time. What would you want to do? There's a giant sort of super war about to happen. Where do you want to be? Back at home weaving with the ladies? Or do you want to be fighting with the gods? Yeah, well, you know. And so, in any case, he wants to help. He's got a good spirit. Because he was the youngest born of all the sons to him and also the most, and also the most beloved... And in speed of his feet, out past all the others, but now in his young thoughtlessness, in display of his running, he swept among the champions until thus he destroyed his dear life. For as he shot by swift-footed, brilliant Achilles, hit him with a spear, thrown in the middle of the back, where the clasps of the war belt were golden, and came together at the joining halves of the corslet, the spearhead held its way on and came out by the navel, and he dropped, moaning on one knee as the darkness gathered about him and sagged and caught with his hand at his bowels in front of him. I just want you to think, and during this, Hector is watching. So Polydorus is not supposed to be fighting. He's too young. But he's very fast, so he's running around and making a big spectacle because he's really excited. Who sees him? Achilles. Achilles, Achilles takes a spear. Aims, he's got perfect aim, hits him through the back, spear comes out his belly, disembowels him. That means his intestines are coming out of him, and he's trying to do what as he dies? Put him back in. Put him back in. But trying to put your intestines back in if you're not a surgeon and you're on a battlefield, you know, it's pretty dirty there. Uh, uh, it's like trying to go back in time. What's definitely not going to happen? He's not going to survive. And so then... Achilles invites Hector to come get slaughtered 
But who has just told Hector that he is not to fight against Achilles at this point, even though he probably really, really wants to because he just had to see this horrifying display. He just had to see his brother get killed. What do you think Hector wants to do more than anything? Fight. fight. What is he not allowed to do because he'll just die if that happens? Fight. fight. What emotion do you think that creates within Hector? Very similar to what emotion Glaucus must have felt when Sarpedon said, please protect my body. And Glaucus said, I'm not strong enough. Frustration and sadness. I think frustration is very good. And this is how book 21 ends, line 490. As inhuman fire sweeps on in fury through the deep angles of a dry wood mountain and sets ablaze the depth of the timber and the blustering wind lashes the flame along, so Achilles swept everywhere with his spear, like something more than a mortal, harrying them as they died, and the black earth ran blood. What is Achilles like when he is on the battlefield? Fire. Fire. What does fire do when it is let loose in a California wood? Destroys. It destroys everything. What is Achilles not like in the fact that he just destroys without remorse? A human. Very, very good. What will he, though, eventually have to realize about himself? He's human. He is human. Excellent. Very good. All right. Book 21. Book 21. You know what? You know what? I think we're just going to have to get to this tomorrow. It, it deserves its own time. I want you to, I also want you to uh, have in your minds a distinction between Polydorus, who just died, whose name ironically means many gifts, uh, <laughs> um, and Lycaon, because Lycaon, this is going to be funny sad. This is going to be a funny sad moment, because I'll just give you a quick preview. Lycaon... Achilles has seen before on the battlefield. Last time he saw him, Achilles captured him, sold him into slavery. Eleven days ago, he got sold back to Priam. And now he's back on the battlefield. And who does he see out there again? And Achilles will actually jokingly be like, what is this? The men that I've already killed are coming back to life for me to kill them again? And then can you guess what he's going to do to Lycaon? He's going to kill him. Very good. Very good. Very good. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.